Hey guys, a couple years ago, NBC Sports was here for a show called FTW Philly, For the Win Philly, and they do short subjects on different things. Now, I don't consider Pimble and our kid game sports, but they thought it would be great to do a segment on us, Kurt. Mm -hmm. Just so happened the TNT Twins were here too. And the segment is terrific. It's only five minutes long. They did really look nice. That was real nice. They did. Uh, my my oh, two well boys. And well, how about if we show it to them? Yeah. Let's see it. Underneath, we find a maze of wires and light bulbs. But one thing you should be always careful of is, for goodness sakes, don't drop the plate. Oh. <laughs> Everybody remembered the fake hand. I used to have people coming up to me with a fake hand. They wanted me to shake it, you know. For the next 30 minutes, stay tuned. I'm Todd N. Tucky for TNT Amusements, and I got into this business in 1979, full time. In the early 70s, we purchased games, and these were video games that were fascinating. Beautiful color, we would produce with a home camera a 10 or 15 minute video of our showroom and what we sold and we propped up a TV set and played it back. It was edited in the camera basically. Interestingly enough, that show got me into the broadcast pioneers of Philadelphia where all the broadcasters we hear about, Gene London, Captain Noah, all these people were members. Of that has gotten me recognized by a lot of people when I walk around town. People would hear my voice. Now that you're here, we'll turn everything on. When people come in, they are immediately struck with a wave of nostalgia. When they were a teenager and went into the arcade and played and learned Pac-Man or saw it for the very first time, this magical picture. Back in the mid-90s when I was a kid, of course you'd be in a big mall, double entrance, you'd walk in, you know, of course the newest game that was out at the time in the 90s uh, would be up front. I remember the bright carpets, you know, they would have dim lights in there, but it was the atmosphere, it was the sound of the arcade games. Of course you'll hear the joysticks and you hear the buttons getting pounded if it's a fighter, and then, you know, you just hear the cores going in the machine. Me. I am more into the 80s games. My twin, he's more into the 90s games. Me and my twin brother played the Superstars a lot. You know, I, I beat him a lot more than he beat me. I mean, it's like anything. Some days your day, some days not. Me and him had fights, <laughs> plenty of fights. You know, we were very competitive, always have been. I looked up and I saw, you know, Todd's YouTube channel and they have a bargain basement. I came to TNT Amusements and while I was here picking up the game, I asked, is there any way that I could help out around here? And then he's like, sure. So I've been doing it ever since. I like working on the games more than I like playing them anymore. You're bringing it back to life. It's like somebody that restores houses or buildings or cars. It's just there's no other feeling like it because you put your soul into it. It's a work of art. These are a work of art. When you bring it in and you take that cabinet and you take your time, you sand it down, you bondo it, you paint it, you put team molding on it, and then you put all your electronics in it and you bring it back to life, you bring it back to collector quality, you really feel proud because people want to buy it from you. When they play it, they can't believe that it's in this good a condition. When somebody brings an arcade game into the shop, you're looking for battery acid damage to make sure the boards are good. You're looking for, is the cabinet swollen anywhere? Do you have to do any repairs? art repair, how the chassis or the monitor is. When you transition a cabinet that looks like someone piece of trash to something that is collector quality, that is what brings me back to the hobby every day. Even though you just you're just working on a game, to them you brought their life back. The only game I pretty much mastered is a game called Digger. And the premise was really neat. The alien crabs want to eat you and the only way to kill them is to dig a hole with five scoops. The crab falls in then you have five scoops to fill him in and then he's dead. And I kept it all these years. I bought it brand new and it's such a great game. A lot of fun. 
these games weren't made for your house. They were made for commercial use, commercial use only. It's lucky that people cared enough about them to bring them into their homes and take care of them. Arcades are here to stay. Not only are they here to stay, they're growing. All around the world, everywhere, the nostalgia feeling is there. And the best part is the young people are starting to get involved. The first wave of growth were bars where young people were discovering Defender, Spy Hunter, Asteroids, Miss Pac-Man, Frogger, Dig Dug. That's where they were discovering it. People want to go back to that. They want the game they played in the arcade and put a fortune into in their house. Games that bring back memories that they've lost, it takes you back to that time. Well, that was good, wasn't it, Kurt? Kurt, do you think this is going to get me a show? No. No show. No show. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>